I love reading the comments that you send into our videos. And I've got one I want to respond to today. You know, we get so many comments to our videos on A Touch of Encouragement, and I try to read them all. And sometimes there's one that just stands out that moves you so deeply. And this one from Brenda that is in response to um, one of the recent videos of Midnight Talk with God touched me so much that I want to share it with you. It's a long one, and I'll, I'll just share. The, I, I don't even want to call them highlights, but I'll share the important parts with you. Um, she said, I've never written to a site like this, and I don't blog, but I was moved to reply this time. So many others are undergoing bad times and sad times. It actually made me sit back and think about my situation. In April 2007, I was run over by my own truck, and I almost died. My right leg will never be the same, and I am now considered to be disabled. At the age of 55, I am now good for nothing. That's the way it feels anyway. Before the accident, I was a workaholic, seven, 70 hours a week, taking care of a large home and a three-quarter acre on my own. Not anymore. I barely can take care of anything. You see, after the accident in April, the physicians found cancer in August. It is 18 months into this ride, and it hasn't gotten any better. Several surgeries on my leg, surgery, radiation treatment for cancer. Then a couple of weeks ago, they found that they didn't get all the cancer. Well, she goes on and she shares the fact that they may have to amputate her leg and if there are no guarantees. And she says, I have not gone to church since the accident. I can't drive. My husband is very angry with God. So I study on my own and I keep a journal of my blessings and my prayers. But it is getting more difficult to rise above the pain and the depression. I've asked myself over and over, why didn't I die under that truck? Why, didn't, why did I have to fight to live? It would have been so much easier to have died and gone on. How odd it is for me to admit this to anyone, especially this way. Odd what circumstances will bring you to. Thanks for listening. I try not to unload on my husband or my children. They have their own troubles, and I don't want to burden them more. That does make the situation bleak sometimes, though. To all that God does for us and the blessings that we have, amen. Brenda, I don't even know where to begin on this, but I will tell you this. First of all, you know that you are not good for nothing, and you know that your life was saved for a purpose that God has for you. Your life is not over, your purpose is not over, and clearly he's got you in a place where all you can do is sit and wait. And do you know that sometimes that is what God calls us to do? They also serve who only stand and wait, or in this case, sit and wait. You know, Brenda, it is so touching to me that you are willing to consider everyone else in light of your own situation. You still are worried about your family. You're still worried about your husband. You worry about his faith. Well, the best thing I think you could do right now is call that church that you can't get to and say, if I can't get to you, can you send somebody to me? You need somebody to pray with. You need somebody to hold hands with and agree together. Agree together, as it, as it says in the Bible, when two or more are gathered together in his name, there I am also. You need a friend, and there is nothing wrong with reaching out and asking for help. Go boldly to the throne of God right now and ask him to lay it on somebody's heart at that church to come and minister to you. And I am going to start praying for the very right person to show up at your door. And I guarantee you, with prayer and with fellowship, things are going to start looking a lot less bleak. I'm going to keep in your prayers, keep you in my prayers, and you keep me in yours, okay? Take care. Bye-bye.